Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen. On this day, October 13th, 105 years ago, the miracle of the sun took place in Fatima. It's the largest miracle that we have on record and the only one to have been predict predicted with such precision. In fact, in July of 1917, Our Lady foretold that it would take place on that day, October the 13th, and specifically in that place and even the time at noon. And so it was that on that day, 70,000 witnesses gathered and they all saw it and witnesses even as far as 15, 25 miles away, saw the miracle. And it gave a stamp of divine approval, we may say, to the entire message of Fatima from beginning to end, from May until October. Doubters, skeptics, masons, anti-clericals all saw. Many of them converted, many of them believed, none of them could deny what they saw. Even a certain anti-Catholic reporter, Almeida, by last name, stood by his story later on, despite harsh criticism. Now, this miracle was foretold in July, but, but in August, on August 19th, Our Lady said that the miracle was going to be diminished, lessened, because of the kidnapping and abuse of the children at the, at the hands of the leftist government officials that had taken place on August the 13th. That's why in August the apparition didn't take place on the 13th, but on the 19th. As big as that miracle was, it could have been, was supposed to have been bigger, but, but for the sin of one fallen away Catholic, become Mason, angry at God and angry at his church. This teaches us, reminds us that the sins of our neighbors make our salvation more difficult for us. And conversely, our sins make salvation more difficult for our neighbors. In the end, of course, Jesus and Mary triumph and prevail. But nevertheless, again, our sins make salvation more difficult for others, theirs more difficult for us. So the children had to undergo a trial nevertheless, which they overcame. And it's good to look at this trial, it's good to look at what happened in August, which we'll do briefly right now, because while the tactics of the devil are always the same and his minions on earth follow them and repeat them over and over again, the way to overcome those tactics, the way to defeat them, is to follow the tactics of Our Lady. And they work over and over again. And they're much simpler, in fact. So, what happened in August? The leftist mayor of Fatima, under the pretext of providing his own car to take the children to the site of the apparitions, shows up and offers his services. So tactic number one, pretexts, lies, and deception. So the children of the evil one imitate their father, who's the father of lies. Pretext, lies, deceptions. The mayor had no real intent of doing what he said he would do. He was not going to take the children to the site of the apparition. Why was he lying? Well, because the mayor, who claimed to sincerely love the truth, was trying to extort the truth from the children, but like a lot of leftists, and it's good to pay attention to these strategies because we deal with them all the time, when dealing with, with persons of a, of a certain leftist leaning. Like all good leftists, the mayor knew that to get to the truth, you have to tell a lot of lies, right? That's a good leftist strategy. So he was trying to make the children say that their apparition, that their, what they saw, was all a big falsehood. So tactic number two, there's going to be nine of these, but we'll try to make this brief. Tactic number two, projecting one's own evil actions onto the victim. Okay, this is a great way, by the way, to come up with labels. Take what you're doing, lying, make it a label, print it out, and try to stick it on the forehead of your victim. It usually works. It works pretty well. So he accuses the children of lying, whereas he is lying himself. By now, he's angry because it's not working. So he's used two tactics already. Usually the label part 
works. At this point, usually leftists prevail, but it's not working. So he's angry. So he tries to force the children to reveal the secret. Tactic number three. In his love for freedom, he tries to take away the freedom, the mayor that is. In his love for freedom, he tries to take away the freedom of others by violating freedom, secrecy, intimacy, privacy, and conscience. And tactic number four. The mayor, like all children of the evil one, tries to make others like him, guilty of evil, guilty of sin. The mayor tries to make the children guilty, likewise, of sin, of lying, to make them lose their innocence, to make them become guilty like their oppressors. Still, it fails. So he now offers to take the children with their parents to see the parish priest, but he's actually lying again. And then he violently separates children from parents and drives off with them, so he kidnaps them. Tactic number five, in his great love for children, in his concern for these children, he wants to protect them from their parents, who are the evil ones, and separates the children from them, and prevents the parents from exercising their rights to raise their own children, to educate their own children, to know what is happening, what is being done to their children. All of these rights violated. And Sister Lucia says, later on when we were put in prison, what made Jacinta suffer most, Jacinta was only seven, the youngest one, and she cried easily, what made her suffer most was to feel that, our parents had, that their parents had abandoned them. With tears streaming down her cheeks, she would say, neither your parents nor mine have come to see us. They don't want to bother with, about us anymore. Tactic number seven, make children feel it's the parents' fault that they've been abandoned, forgotten, neglected. It's not the mayor's fault, it's the parents' fault that this is happening to you, Jacinta. What a tactic. So the good, honest mayor doesn't give up. The truth is just too important, so he keeps trying. He tries bribes now, threats of death, and locking the children in a cell with other criminals in order to get them to recant their story. Which is tactic number eight. And his great love for uh, dialogue and inclusivity and diversity, this mayor subjects those who disagree with him to threats and abuse. And tactic number nine. He subjects the children specifically to abuse. So subjecting those who are either children or in other ways vulnerable to criminals to protect them. From whom? From parents, from family, from other criminal institutions. You gotta put them with criminals and subject them to their abuse. The amazing thing is that the criminals with which the, the children were uh, put into contact actually showed themselves quite Christian in their regard, as we'll see in just a, a moment. So, nine tactics of the devil. How did the children respond to these tactics? With the tactics of Our Lady, which are simpler and more effective. Penance and prayer. The first one, penance. Lucia tells the story, as the Blessed Virgin had told us to offer our prayers and sacrifices in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we agreed that each of us would choose one of these intentions. One would offer for sinners, another for the Holy Father, and yet another in reparation for the sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And when little Jacinta was again overcome by sadness, the other children reminded her of Our Lady's words, don't cry. Francisco would say to her, we can offer this to Jesus for sinners. Then raising his hands and eyes to heaven, he made the offering. Oh my Jesus, this is for love of you and for the conversion of sinners. And Jacinta in her sadness would be strengthened, would be encouraged. And she too would say, and also for the Holy Father, I offer this sacrifice for him and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And two, they prayed the rosary. Jacinta took off a medal that she was wearing around her neck and asked the prisoners to hang it up for her on a nail in the wall. Kneeling before this medal, we began to pray, and the prisoners prayed with us. That is, if they knew how to pray, at least they tried, but at least they were down on their knees. And once the rosary was over, Jacinta went over to the window and started crying again. But we would encourage her again. 
and she would pray again and she would overcome her trials. And when the criminals, again, these were men who were trying to be good, but nevertheless, not 100% Christian. When the criminals tried to suggest worldly ways of getting out of the suffering, the children refused. The criminals would say, all you have to do is to tell the administrator, meaning the mayor, the secret, tell him what he wants to hear. What does it matter whether the lady wants you to do so or not? Never was Jacinta's vigorous reply. I'd rather die, and so said all the children. The so-called trial of the children continued for two more days, but finally on the Feast of the Assumption, August the 15th, the mayor could no longer resist Our Lady's foot stepping on his head and crushing it, so he gave up. Vanquished by these three little children using these simple tactics, one of them just seven years old, defeated. He had them driven back to Fatima and left in the steps of the rectory. The offspring of the serpent, by their sins, can make salvation more difficult for us. But Jesus and Mary always prevail. They have their tactics, cunning tactics, but we have ours. The offspring of Our Lady, we have our tactics. With the help of Our Lady, the children defeated the machine of sin, which was trying to break the bond of charity between them and God, between them and their families, between them and one another. And the children defeated the enemy and his tactics. Again, his tactics are always the same. Ours have to likewise be the same. Faith, penance, prayer, and these tactics will always be successful. And we, with the help of Our Lady, will always be victorious against the evil one. Praised be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.